This week when we're talking about networks, we are focusing on networks um, of a personal nature. But personal networks don't have to extend just to your personal life. My personal learning network is a key part of my professional identity and my experience of being a professional. In this video, I wanted to share with you some insight into my personal learning network, how it's constructed, how it's built and evolved over time, and what role it plays in my professional practice. Before I get into talking about my personal learning network, let's talk more broadly about personal learning networks for a moment. Personal learning networks are informal networks of people uh, that may or may not be communities or might comprise communities that come together to learn in an informal way. So we're not necessarily setting out on a specific educational pathway together, but as we engage in our professional practice, we're continually learning and continually sharing with each other and we're developing our professional skills and knowledge. In my personal learning network, I play many different roles or wear many different hats. I'm an academic and so I am connected to other academics with similar interests so that I can keep on top of what they're up to. I also connect with educational technologists because I have a strong interest in technologies in education, particularly the use of social technologies for online teaching and learning. I also connect with library and information professionals because that's my professional background and I'm also the coordinator of the library and information education programs at QUT. So it's very important that I maintain strong connections with uh, industry. But I'm also a student in my personal learning network. So I'm not just a professional, I'm someone who is in the process of undertaking some kind of formal education and I connect with other PhD students um, on Twitter, on Instagram and in the various places that my personal learning network is based. Speaking of which, my personal learning network is based in a lot of places. When I first started talking about the concept of personal learning networks, my PLN was primarily situated in Twitter with, um, I guess, some support from blogs. So there's a really big community of librarians and library professionals who are very active Twitter users. Uh, in fact, it's kind of a key um, moment for students or people um, becoming library information professionals um, when they embark on creating a Twitter account and establishing um, a network in Twitter. It's um, something that's actually really important for this profession because it gets uh, has so much traction and people um, really connect with each other in that space. Over time, my personal learning network has evolved and it has moved into new spaces and different spaces, um, but Twitter tends to still be the central point. These days I do a lot of interacting with the kind of core people in my personal learning network on Instagram where we have this really nice reciprocity where we share about our personal lives as well as our professional lives. I also uh, engage with a bunch of people who blog. So um, blogging was huge in libraries. Um, starting about 10 years ago um, with lots of professional blogs by librarians as well as organisational blogs um, that libraries were putting out. We have quite um, a diverse but um, interesting community of bloggers in library and information practice who blog about um, a variety of different things from their personal lives to their reading to their professional lives to their research and so forth. In fact, it's such a rich network of bloggers that um, we have a challenge once a year to blog every day in June. And for that one month, um, tens and tens and tens of um, library and information bloggers and now people from other spaces as well um, invest in posting once a day to their blogs um, for that 30 day period. Those of you who've blogged before will know that it's uh, difficult to maintain um, momentum with blogging and so the Blog June Challenge has been a way for us to all kind of refocus and re-energise and get going with our blogging again once a year. 
More recently, I'm using Google Plus communities as part of my personal learning network. And there's a few different communities that I'm involved in. For example, there's a community of people at QUT who are working on learning transformation, who post lots of things about learning analytics and online learning and the future of teaching and learning. So that's a really important site for me in terms of uh, keeping myself up to date. So one of the really great things about personal learning networks is that they promote this idea of serendipity. So I can't tell you the number of times that I've tweeted something or posted about something and it's re resulted in some kind of serendipitous learning. Um, I've discovered an article that someone has um, posted that probably would never have crossed my path otherwise. Or I've tweeted about a call for papers and I have found and collaborated with someone on a paper as a result of that tweet. For example, um, one of my colleagues who has uh, been working with me until quite recently, we initially met on Twitter. Um, we both were tweeting about a call for papers for a particular conference. We ended up going on to write a paper for that conference and we had only met each other and spent one hour together in the same space um, before we actually wrote that paper and um, I went off to the UK and delivered it and, and Skyped the other person in on my phone. So. I don't actually have to know people in the real world in order to get value from my personal learning network. Personal learning networks are also um, really useful in terms of being able to think out loud. So you can come out with your wildest and craziest and wackiest ideas and you can get a sense check on those before you actually do anything about them. So your personal learning network can be a sounding board, um, a group of people that you can go to and test out your thoughts and then um, refine your thinking. And if you're a blogger, you can do this through uh, longer form blog posts, um, have real discussions with people about it, but it also happens in short form in things like tweets. I've done this around things like papers, sounding out ideas for research studies, but I've also done it in the context of teaching and learning. So uh, when I first started working at QUT, in my first year of teaching, I developed a unit that looked at social technologies for information professionals. And I used my personal learning network um, to test out my ideas around what needed to be covered in terms of technologies in this unit. And I used them to help me refine the set of technologies uh, down to something that was manageable and the you know, the real essential core of the social technologies that I needed to be teaching students about. So in that instance, my personal learning network was a sounding board um, and really helped me to develop my new program. My personal learning network has also helped me in the past in terms of bringing me what I need right when I need it. For example, once in the very early days of using Twitter, um, I was looking at a service evaluation and I really needed some benchmarking data to help me understand um, what we were doing uh, and how it was performing in a broader context. Um, and I happened to tweet about my frustration about not being able to um, find any data for benchmarking. Within a few minutes, someone said to me, oh, have you met so-and-so? And then so-and-so emailed me, and then within an hour, I had a set of benchmarking data that I could use to evaluate my service. Now, that's just something I could never have done without my personal learning network and without using social technologies. My personal learning network has been an enormous support to me through the process of um, undertaking my PhD. Through the entire journey, I have had a virtual cheer squad, which has just been fantastic. Um, they've kind of kept me motivated. I've received little cards or presents in the post right when I was kind of pulling all-nighters, trying to pull the thesis together right at the end. Um, those people helped me find participants by tweeting recruitment messages about my study so that um, I could find people to interview. Um, you know, it goes from kind of emotional um, and I guess uh, psychological support all the way through to that kind of very practical support. People offering to proofread for me, people helping me find participants, people offering um, accommodation if I was in their town collecting data. So 
having that network in place was really incredibly helpful to me through the entire PhD journey. I made a conscious decision to document the last phase of writing my complete thesis draft um, using photos on Instagram. And I did this for myself because I wanted to be able to reflect back on this time. But posting those photos um, was really important in terms of keeping me connected to my learning community in a time where I really had retreated and I wasn't blogging and I wasn't tweeting and I wasn't getting to events. Um, so posting those photos and documenting my journey meant that I maintained my networks and my networks continued to support me even though I was frantically writing at home and essentially stuck in a cave. Um, so it kept me connected to the real world and kept me motivated and, and, um, and also maintained those networks. Perhaps the most important thing that a personal learning network can do for you is help you with continued growth and continued learning as a professional. We don't just stop learning when we finish at university. The fields we work in are dynamic, they're moving very quickly, there are new social technologies um, released basically every second day. Um, and it's really difficult to keep up to date and in touch with all of those developments without building some kind of network that can help you with that. So your personal learning network is a key tool in um, your current awareness. Learning is a lifelong thing. We keep evolving as professionals. You guys are probably gonna change careers five times. I've done it a couple of times already and I'm only in my early 30s. So we need to be able to um, continue to develop and learn and, and to do that in um, not always a conscious way, um, but you know, kind of seeing stuff come past us through personal learning networks is about being um, unconsciously made aware of what's happening around you. And that brings me to the idea of building the right kind of network. My personal learning network is very much um, a filter. When I first um, decided to pursue a full-time career as an academic, I thought, fantastic, I'm gonna have all this time to read, I'm gonna be so up to date on the latest developments, everything is going to be awesome, I'm gonna read and write and produce and, um, and be really aware of what's going on around me. In reality, academic life is uh, not so focused on reading and writing. Um, we do have to read and write, but time is probably the scarcest commodity in my life. Um, and so over the years, I have at different times relied on my personal learning network to be a bit of a filter for me. I used to subscribe to two or 300 different blogs, which I would read, um, every day, clear my feed reader, get through every single new post from those blogs. As I've gotten busier over time, that has become more and more difficult. And yes, there are tools like Zeit that can help me to uh, see the most important information uh, in my context, but my personal learning network has also been a really important um, tool for me in being able to stay up to date without having to read everything that crosses my path. I can kind of count on my personal learning network to surface the things that are important for me to see. And the reason I can count on that is because I've invested time and energy and a lot of years into developing my personal learning network. Generally, I can be pretty sure that if I'm keeping up to date with what people are doing in my Twitter feed and what people are posting, that I'm going to catch most things that are of interest to me. I may not catch everything, but in those times when I'm too busy to empty my feed reader every day, the Personal Learning Network has kept me up to date on the most important things. I've added a reading or two about the principles that underpin Personal Learning Networks, um, but it doesn't have to be something big and scary and tricky and academic. This is just about relationships, finding the right people to create relationships with, and then nurturing and maintaining those relationships for your personal and professional benefit and for theirs. It's not rocket science. Just get out there and get connected to the industry that you're going to be involved in in the very near future.